Liberals try to control language because they understand, unlike conservatives, that words really matter. Words define ideas. Words make ideas possible. And euphemisms are their specialty. Now, euphemism is by definition a lie. Euphemism is a turn of phrase designed to hide the fact that the person using it either has no idea what he's talking about or is trying to lie to you about what he's talking about. So here's our new favorite euphemism. The experts are using the term minor attracted persons in place of pedophile. Minor attracted persons. Oh, here's some examples. Want to talk about minor attracted persons because they are probably the most vilified population of folks in our culture. And you may have noticed that I'm using the term minor attracted persons, sometimes abbreviated to max, instead of the more commonly used term pedophile. MAP advocacy groups like Before You Act um, have advocated for use of the term MAP. Um, they've advocated for it primarily because it's less stigmatizing than other terms like pedophile. Uh, a lot of people, when they hear the term pedophile, they automatically assume that it means a sex offender. Uh, and that isn't true, and it leads to a lot of misconceptions about attractions toward minors. Yeah, we're being too tough on the kid touchers. The Protasia Foundation, look that up if you have 10 minutes. Brother Calvin Robinson is an Anglican deacon in the UK, one of the last sane people in that denomination. We're grateful to have him join us tonight. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Robinson, thank you so much uh, for coming on tonight. So minor attracted person, wh what do you make of that? Tucker, let's not mince our words here. This is the greatest evil there is. What we're talking about is the normalization of pedophilia. That is all we're seeing here. And you're right, they're reclaiming the words, they're taking over the language and defining it in a very clever way. Because once they say, these are not pedophiles, these are minor attractive people, they can say they're also vilified, as we heard there, persecuted. And then they'll say they are an oppressed minority group, and therefore they deserve to be a protected characteristic. And then, all of a sudden, we have pedophiles, or pedophiles, being protected under the law. And that's what they're after here. It's very, very, there's nothing more dangerous. Well, that's right, and it's a tell. I mean, if you are with someone on the playground or at your kid's school who uses the phrase minor attracted persons, I think it's fair to call the police right away because you know what that person's intent is. Like, what, what, what else are they saying? They're excusing pedophilia. Absolutely. There are three sides to this. So, of course, firstly, they take over the, la the language, and that is so that they can break down the boundaries. And then thirdly, that's so they can break down the family and society. And that's what this has always been about. You know, some of us have been warning about this for years and have been called conspiracy theorists. But there's a reason that there's the mantra, love is love. Because if love means love for anyone, there's no boundaries involved there. And then when we're talking in an age where someone could define their race, someone could define their gender, and someone could define their sex or any other immutable characteristics, why would they not be able to define their age? If you can say, I identify as a woman, what's to stop you saying, I identify as a 12-year-old girl? And if love is love, and you are identifying as a 12-year-old girl, what is to stop you from having a relationship with another 12-year-old girl, biological or non-biological? This is the problem we find ourselves in. This is why they're redefining the language. This is why they're breaking down the boundaries. It's wicked, it's evil, and we must do everything we can to stop it and protect our children. It's amazing. Are you really an Anglican deacon? <laughs> just about. The Church of England did not want me, but I'm still an Anglican just outside of the Church of England. There's a long, uh, there's a big battle against wokeness going on. Well, we're rooting for you. Hey, Kevin